there are there are tales in North America right about the time of our Civil War and, and the colonial wars. Um, and even later on into when America, after America's founding, um, there was a war, I believe it was called the Battle of the Nine Sorrows, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. There was a gentleman from New England, his, his family had been there for about two or three generations. And uh, he agreed to fight in the war. Now, he unfortunately died in the war, but um, his remains were brought back. Now, there were tales told of how massive this guy was and how many people he actually took down on the battlefield. Now, his, his dimensions were allegedly around eight and a half feet. So, eight foot Jeez. six inches. But the really peculiar thing is he's got living descendants to this day that still have the double rows of teeth. Oh. And they've, um, I found his name in other articles, but this was in older research. I'll try to dig it up and give it to you. You can look at this one yourself one day later on. Oh, for sure. Um, his family, even generations later, there were newspaper articles about their great grandfather who was eight and a half feet tall and fought in the Battle of the Nine Sorrows or Seven Sorrows or whatever. I can't remember the name of the battle. But uh, he also had another odd feature. He had an extra digit on his hands. He had six fingers. Yeah, you'll, you'll hear that a lot too. Um, a lot in... Um when talking about the uh, the Nephilim, for example, they are supposed to have uh, six digits on each hand and uh, and their feet, I believe. Uh, now they were they were considered giants too, or descendant from giants. Yes, or... the, uh, the Nephilim were uh, sons of the Watchers. The Watchers were the Titans, and the Nephilim uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. were the hybrids. So. The, the watered down lineage, if you will. The, um, yeah, okay. It is explained as the sons of uh, the sons of Jupiter and the daughters of Gaia in Roman mythology, or is it Greek in Greek mythology? Jupiter. Uh, the, um, no, that's uh, that's Roman. I mean, Roman Greek. They're the the, the pantheon. Yeah, they're, 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 they're really similar. I mean. The, the Romans, they yeah. took so much. It's just like, these are our gods now, too. <laughs> awesome. Yes, Thanks. yeah. We're just going to give them different names. Don't, don't, don't mind Yeah, I mean, I mean come, the, go ahead and call this one Goose. <laughs> the Romans, they had up to 2,000 gods. They had a god for everything, so. Well, they, they worshipped their demigods also, which was an odd thing to do in many cultures. I mean, you, you praise the heroes, but you don't worship them, you know? Um, we, 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 our demigods are a bit different in our old culture because they are also gods. They are not just heroes. The heroes yeah. would have been our gods' children. So even our gods would be what the, the equivalent to their gods, and then the Jotun would be the Titans. Yeah. So in, in many cultures, you have similar tales of the same structure. Now, the Titans were giants. I mean, even to the gods, the Titans were giants. Uh, even to the Norse gods, the Jotuns were giants. Yeah. You know, and Thor was a giant man. You know what I mean? So what, what does a giant look up and see as a giant, you know? So we found these, these right, you know, we find it's, it's, it's like Inception, man. It's a dream within a dream. Yeah, no, um, yeah, find, exactly. Right? Like, how? what does a giant look up to as a giant? But we see these footprints everywhere. And in, in four cases, they are so definite. And, and you have to look at that and say, okay, well, something had that foot, and it clearly wasn't an Apatosaurus. You know what I mean? <laughs> you don't have a Tyrannosaurus Rex walking around with six human digits, you know? But we have, we have tales of it that Stein is like in North America, 600 years ago with the Native Americans. The colonial war days, and uh, in even in the wars in New England, after yeah. the country was settled, we have we have tales of these peoples and their lineage. So, yeah. I mean, the, we the, we have them we have them here in the Netherlands too. Made me think of um, I, I can't think of his name uh, right now, but I um, a, a while ago I shared that in the in the tribe, the, uh, the Frisian pirate who had a, uh, a two handed oh, yeah. sword, which like his sword alone was seven feet. He was, um, I believe just yeah. one, one swing of his sword and he chopped 
three managers. Was that a group beer? Yeah. Yeah. Was that a different? Yeah. Okay. That was that was it. Was the Frisian? Yeah, he was. He was like a Frisian pirate, uh, I believe. And um, I mean, yeah, he he is said to be, you know, tall as well. I mean, you got to be if you're wielding a seven foot two hander. But you know, even if you're seven foot tall yourself, to wield a a seven foot two handed sword, it's it's a challenge. Like you you got to be even yes. bigger than that. Yeah. So. I'm I'm an inch under six foot, and for me to wield a six foot sword, I would find to be absurd. You know, yeah, that's that's a lot of momentum and an awkward thing to swing around. You know what and I mean? That wouldn't be very especially satisfying. especially it would be very uh, frightening to see. You know, oh, sure. You know, I I run. Yeah, how, how well would you be able to wield such a weapon? 